Primary health care is actually a good way of delivering care to people at lower cost. Take an example. If you were to get an infection of something like malaria, your first point of call really shouldn't be a level 5 hospital. But really you should be able to go to your dispensary or your health center and that makes it cheaper for you and therefore you're not congesting the top level. For Perth as an institution, we believe that health should be accessible to people, even those who live the farthest. We believe in health equity and our ultimate belief is that when health improves, humanity in its entirety moves forward. We have a specific strategy on primary health care that looks at delivering services such as maternal, newborn and child health, services like HIV and TB care and treatment, malaria services, NCDs to the front lines closest to the people who need these services. If you go back to the late 70s, the country just like any other adopted primary health care, then recommitted itself again in 2018. But that period in between you realize that our primary health care system didn't grow as envisioned and the recommitment therefore has brought it with it a certain number of things. One is the country has designed new policies that are in line with our current context and reality and also has guidelines to reorganize the healthcare system so that primary health care can become strong. And primary health care now is rooted in universal health coverage and is seen as the engine to drive the country towards achieving universal health coverage. One thing we've learned over the years is it's easy many times for governments to move forward and make commitments in policy documents. The challenge is implementing the commitments that are written down and therefore we, we are doing two things. One, we have a level of partnership with the government in helping making, make sure that policies as they are being written, they are reflective of the needs of communities that we've worked with. We've been in Kenya for 29 years and we've generated a lot of evidence and learned a lot of, a lot of lessons. And therefore we lend that evidence to influence how government is writing its policies so that they can be easy to implement. And the second piece is you can't implement what you don't know. So we work with both the national government as well as counties and other organizations to disseminate these policies to the people who need to know them. The other piece we do is we are doing advocacy around planning and budgeting because for anything to be implemented it needs money, it needs to be funded. We are also driving advocacy especially at the county level for better planning and prioritization of primary health care services and the required reorientation and reorganization of health systems so that then the counties are able to adapt the new models like the primary care networks models um, that can accelerate implementation of primary health care. In addition to that, we're looking forward to working with local organizations to hold county governments, national governments to account for delivering primary health care to them in the way that the policies recommend. There are many challenges along the way. The primary care networks are rather new and that concept is not being disseminated efficiently, especially at the county where they're actually doing service delivery. There's need for dissemination of the policy. In addition to dissemination of policies, is this country, just like any other, has been deeply, deeply affected by COVID-19 pandemic and therefore our resources as a country have shrunk and therefore things may not scale as fast as if we had better resources. My call would be to counties to really prioritize health and not just counties but also the national government to really prioritize health because we've all learned the lesson that the health and well-being of our nation can determine whether we will grow an economy or we will grind an economy to a halt.